Hello everyone, joining us live now on YouTube. Um, I have the boss with me, Ross Embleton. Of course, we're going to preview the weekend's action against Grimsby Town. I think the first place to start, really, boss, will be by reflecting on the week that we've had. Of course, drawn first with Barrow away from home and then losing to Walsall on the road. So coming back home to the Brew Group Stadium, we'll be looking to get a positive result this Saturday. Two right. Uh, Elever Petrol Bill then this week. Um, the distance that we've covered is obviously... Um, has been huge. Um, disappointed, obviously, in the points return that we have or haven't got in terms of the way you want to you want to look at that. Uh, I think uh, probably got to assess the two games differently. First, the the Barrow game um, changed very quickly in terms of our outlook and the circumstances that we were um, that we found ourselves in. So, I was very impressed and pleased with the attitude and determination that the lads showed throughout that what turned out to probably well I know turned out to be 90 minutes without um with 10 men in terms of the additional minutes that were put on in the game so very pleased with the way that we went about that and the fact that we came out of that one with a point but uh disappointed with the um with the evening uh, as a whole really uh obviously got off to a good start which makes a bit of a change on on Tuesday night but um we didn't capitalise on that and, and, and build on that. So uh, disappointed, but as has always been the case when we've suffered setbacks, which uh, under my um, under my sort of permanent managerial um, experience, hasn't uh, there hasn't been lots and lots of them, but we've always um, knuckled down and focused on what we haven't done particularly well and, and come back fighting. So um, looking forward to tomorrow. And having played so long of the Barrow game with 10 men and then on the back of the effect of COVID having two weeks out, do you think when we got to that Warsaw game, we were a little leggy, perhaps fatigue may have creeped in? Potentially, but uh, as we said after the Cheltenham game, we by no means use it as an excuse. Um, these games are as they are, the fixtures are as they are. They're not going anywhere, they're not going to change. We've got another long, lengthy trip next week. We've got to embrace it. We can't afford to... Um, to moan or sulk about it, we've got to, we, you know, we've got to, we've got to do everything we can to be prepared. So, um, I don't think that I really looked at the team and thought that we were up against it physically. I think it was more a performance thing um, that that we let ourselves down with. But we've recognised that we've you know we've done a lot uh, in terms of you know, video and discussions off the back of it, and um, finally got our hands back on the players today in terms of being able to do a little bit of preparation for tomorrow. A couple of standout individual performances from the week. Danny Johnson, of course, scoring, it seems, almost every game. And then Lawrence Vigarou has made a couple of key saves in, in, in both of those games. Yeah, I think um, I think to start with Dan, I mean, it's an unbelievable patch of and, and run of form and goals that he's, that he's getting at the moment. So, uh, absolutely delighted for him because he's a player that works his socks off. And, and uh, one thing... Uh, Sounds probably sounds like a bit of a silly thing to say, but when we signed him, it was goals that we were craving. It was um, goals in and around the box that we really felt. That I think I said it after Tuesday's game, but a bit disappointed that statistically we don't, um, we can't. Uh, we can't put up such recognition for Lawrence as, uh, as we can for Danny because of some of the sloppy goals and mistakes that we've made to uh, to let in goals. But you know, we've done more work on that again today, and we feel as though um, you know we all, we're all aware it's, uh, that it is something that we want to improve on. But um, for both of those two lads, exceptional starts to the season, and um, you know, reward for the fact that we uh, put our faith in, in bringing them in in January and delighted with the way that they're performing. And another honourable mention, Tunji Akinola, of course, came on from the bench against Barrow, which was his Football League debut, and then made his full debut shortly after against Warsaw. Yeah, um, when you bring players in, you've got to give them a chance, you know. And um, Tunji's been, was thrown into the deep end on um, on Saturday and felt he coped really well under, under a lot of pressure. Um, and then I thought he performed well enough the other night. We haven't actually had a chance to really... You know, other than sit down and show him some video footage, we haven't really had a chance to get him out in training and really uh, show him what it is we expect of him. Um, 
and what we want in terms of you know the types of ways in which you're going to fit into the team. So for him to come in and do it and perform in the manner that he has, he, he deserves a lot of credit. So uh, probably not playing in his first choice position, but obviously that sometimes you've got to find your way into the team and, and perform at a certain level and he's done that so far. With five games into the league season now, you were quite clear post Walsall in saying that you felt perhaps the earlier cup form has perhaps glistened over results in the league. Does that add a little bit of importance to Saturday's game against Grimsby? Of course, of course. Your league form dictates how your season pans out and, and, and will dictate all of our futures. Um, so we're disappointed that we haven't been able to maintain the same results in the cup that we would like to have had in the league. But um, I don't think we're far off. Uh, but at the same time, I have expressed the fact that I don't think we've reached the heights that we're capable of yet. So um, that's something we've been focusing on. Um, as we already said, very tough to, to do that in terms of an actual training model and being able to to actually you know work on it day to day because we, we, we're limited on that time. But we've gone out today trying to trying to look at the elements that we need to look at, and, and I feel as though the boys are in a good place to uh, go and put put a performance in tomorrow. Grimsby will come to London and they'll they'll pose a challenge. They've got a top manager in Holloway and a good result in midweek for them too. Very good result. Cheltenham are a very good team and I think that Ian Holloway's teams are always um, always bang at it. You know, we've got a real intensity to the way that they play. Um, you know, try to, when I say try, that's not me to me talking them down anyway. But always try to play good, entertaining football and. And those are the uh, those are the managers you aspire to uh, to follow and come up against in order to pit your wits against people at our level that have been at the very very top. So I'm excited to to do that and put my team up against his and and see what we're capable of. Um, I, I don't think we live in fear of anybody at this level. I think we've shown that so far that we can go up against the teams that are you know going to be in and around the top of this division this season. Um, and we'll be, we, we will be looking forward to the challenge that Ian Holloway and Grimsby will pose. And if you rewind back to January, Grimsby coming to the Borough Group Stadium was, of course, your first game as, as the permanent head coach of the club. Time's gone pretty quick, hasn't it, boss? There's plenty that's happened then. Um, and, uh, you know, like I say, at the time, probably an indifferent performance, but, um, you know, felt like we... we, we you know, it was, it was um, we let ourselves down in terms of a couple of the moments within that game, but the performance on the whole wasn't too bad in that in, in that game. So um, it's a new team in terms of, you know, I think we're in a different place completely now that we were back then. Um, and despite everything that ha that's happened, um, it'd be an interesting one to see, so like I say, how far we've come in in that period of time. I don't think our record has been um, too shabby so far. Um but we want to get better. We'll, we'll aspire to do more and we need to start by doing that and, and trying to pick up three points tomorrow. And to follow up on some of the injuries that you spoke about post Walsall, I think off the top of my head, Lee, Louis uh, and Miles were some of the names and then of course Ruel returning from international duty. Is there any other um, kind of updates in terms of the squad? Uh, Lou, very similar. Like I said, he'd been suffering with a back problem. So um, he, he's been in today and we're monitoring that one to see where he gets to, uh, how, how quickly we're getting back into the team and, and on the pitch will, will remain to be seen. Um, it's a little bit of a, a juggling one at the moment because it, it's been a stiff back more than anything else that's really serious. So, um, we, like I say, consistently monitoring that one. Lee is in a good place. Um, spoke to him this morning and he said he felt he was um, very upbeat, very, um, wasn't suffering with a great deal of pain. Um, we've just got to make sure that we really rehab him properly because we don't want him breaking down again. So uh, we've got we're on the side of caution of that one. Miles still suffering with some soreness in his hamstrings. Like I say, it's been ongoing um, for, a, for a while now. With Ruel, Ruel's come back, but he's not been allowed to train today. Um, he's had to go through uh, COVID testing, so wasn't allowed, despite being back at work, wasn't allowed in contact with anybody. So he's been doing some weird and wonderful distance training session that we've never done before outside with Matty uh, and Mikey, the fitness coach, in order to um, get the flight out of his legs and, and hopefully be make sure that he's prepared and ready to come back with his goal scoring out, unlike he picked up against um, against Belarus back, back in the late in Orient shirt. 
Perfect. And finally, from me, boss, the Premier League released a statement midweek regarding the future of football. Uh, Project Big Picture has been dismissed, but it has been said that all 20 Premier League teams will find a strategic plan to secure the safety of the football pyramid. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to say anything, any thoughts that you might have on that. I think it's a tough one because it's sort of been shot down already. So it sort of makes it, you know, makes it difficult to, to talk any further on that. Probably with a great respect to the to the initiative, it's probably pointless me trying to cover that in any way, shape or form. But I think there's numerous ways in which um, clubs at our level, clubs, you know, anywhere in the pyramid need support. You know, we, we can all see the impact that it's having on people not being in stadiums. He's going to be, could be, hopefully not, but crippling for, for some clubs. Um, so the support needs to come from somewhere. Um, you know, whether people say to say to me about the responsibility of the top level clubs having to help um, clubs lower down the pyramid, I'm not sure if there's a direct responsibility. But I think at the same time, it'd be great to see a filtering down of um, you know some of the some of the money and some of the wealth that's at the top end of the game. Whether that fits with the the clubs, the governing governing bodies is. Uh, I suppose a decision that's way, 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 way above anything that, uh, that I can influence. But I think you know everyone's finding it tough. Everyone's finding it difficult. It's um, it's having and will ha- continue to have a massive impact on everybody. And um, the sooner some sort of aid or, or support can 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 come to, to clubs like us, then uh, the, you know the better that's going to be for for the future of our game. Perfect. Thank you very much, boss. That's all from me. And and thank you to everyone who's tuned in live on YouTube to, to listen to this pre-match interview. Uh, that's all from us. And we, we really hope that the Wi-Fi signal didn't affect the viewing too much. Um, but the, you'll